this? Are they gonna try an aggro try? Ah. Uh, could give it a shot. I don't think they want to dive in behind the tower with this. And the Ten reason why it's an aggro try is because you can just look for range nukes to throw out. And you just try and murder Five everybody you possibly can with that. If they go for this though, they need a good physical DPSer. Or else the Jaro Reserve is just gonna time. win this in late game. There Five is no doubt in my mind remaining. about that one. They can go... Well, they can't even go more greedy, because that's... That should be the secondary support. Navi's it should be the second support. Unless they're going to try and run SK as a core. Uh, Naga Siren was the thought of Mag. Decent thought. Navi's just missing that dps -er. It could just be the Lunar. It could still be exactly what I was looking for before. Ten seconds remaining. Still be Five a big powerhouse. Remaining. It's a big fan of the Lunar in the current meta. Kind of like the reason why I keep flagging her all the time. Tidehunter's the last ban again. Radiant Puppy is really ban. worried about their team fight control. SK, Coddle, Storm Spirit. At the same time, Coddle, like if Ruby can steal recall and abilities like this, he becomes just as good as Coddle. And if he also, like, like the, the beautiful thing is too, and I'm pretty sure the mechanic still works this way, even after the changes that came out to, uh, to Keeper of the Light. If Rubik Bloody steals night. the Illuminate when Coddle's in, in ethereal form, to pick. he gets... Um, he gets it so he can cast it, so he, uh, he has the, the ghost form as well. That's, that's where Rubik is just like, oh my god, this guy is so damn powerful. Because he can just keep throwing out Illuminate after Illuminate, and not have to put himself at risk, just like Keeper of the Light can do right now. Uh, DK's going to be the final pickup here by Team Empire, and... Wait, what? There's a Mag offlane and Resolution DK in the remaining. mid. Either that they put Mag on the safe lane, they try and run Gyro, Rubik, Five seconds remaining. Twist together into an aggro tri lane. And that may be the reason why Keeper of the Light's also in the pool, because if this is going to be a defensive lane from Na'Vi, which it most Radiant definitely will be now... Uh, uh, actually, I won't say definitely, because there is no definites with this. You want a dagger and... Uh, you don't want to get massive slows from that, but you can at least harass it back out a little bit with it. Uh, uh, but you should have a lot of mana, a lot of spam you can have on, on the lanes. Whoops, I want that overlay. Uh, yeah. You could run a safe lane, and if that is an aggro try lane from Team Empire, I wish him all the best of luck. It's going to be a rough lane, but at the same time, until SK gets level 2, it should actually be quite a, a simple lane for them. If they can ca catch Coddle. The SK, get him into that rocket barrage. Telekinesis like set up, defend the follow up with the, with the, uh, with the slow from Vanskor giving us all the time to finish up the damage. That could work. That's definitely work. Seconds, but in this game, probably not. Remaining. We're just looking at Mag to take the puck towards the offlane, resolution towards the mid, Five and then just remaining. the safe lane tri lane would be the, would be the safest bet. If you're gonna put rares on your predictions, of course. Alright, so into the game we go. Oops, wrong draft. There we go. Right overlay. Draskill's keyboard, it's very, very unsettling. Uh, I'm not used to mechanical keyboards, I never use them. I use the nice smooth ones. Yeah. We're gonna have uh, Team Empire, so just a, a quick pause coming out from Mag. I don't know if he was the one to pick up his hero last in this. I wanna see the lanes and how they roll out. It's, it's one of these things too, that's just... Uh, it was interesting in the last game to see how they were switching themselves around. So you always try and just keep the enemy on their toes. Like you try and run a whisk gyro on the off lane, you're like, hang on, uh, I thought it was just going to be a safe lane. That's what San always does, you think, why would he change it up? But at this point... Oh, Empire and RV, they just get to chill in a freaking pause. Why are you taking that time out, guys? Just want to say, uh, if you haven't been watching, we're doing a lot of D2CL coverage. You can go to uh, dailymotion.com forward slash join Dota, where the VODs are uploaded at the end of the day. And you can also head yourself over into the wonderful, wonderful... Where are they all... Are they all glowing or purple? Like purple. Pendium owners. They're all purple. Mm. Yeah, but, um... <laughs> Head yeah, yourself over to the Daily Motion channel. We upload the videos there and then over to youtube.com forward slash join Dota uh, for all the VODs. If you also want to check out our new channel, it's uh, Join Dota Plus over on YouTube. So please definitely go over there and subscribe to that channel as well. We're putting out unique content up there. We're going to take some highlights from the TI qualifiers and start uploading videos over there too. So you can enjoy all our wonderful coverage. All our wonderful, spectacular coverage.
Empire's moving so aggressively. They want this Na'vi jungle. They do not want this top lane to feel safe. They do not want a Vorse to get fat. The primary goal right now. Don't let a Vorse get too much farm. 30 seconds to battle. Because that Spectre, he'll disintegrate them in the later portion of this game. A Vorse. Oh, they find always want to fly. I say always want to fly, finds a Vorse. Rocket Mirage, Illuminant, a Vorse goes through the tree line and away to safety. And the Illuminate will connect on all three up on this top lane. If Vance just punches on a Tango, so Silent will get his life points back anyway. But Avorst already getting hit hard. And this wasn't his plan here. He has a poor man shield and and, uh, and two tankers. Are they going to give him the space and let Kuro have the farm at the start? He, uh, he might just be coming back to block. So that's not too far. Poppy wants his jungle. That's what he really wants. He wants to be able to stack up and just Illuminate spam to farm. Funnick gets his off lane, so it'll be Funnick up against Mag Puck. Not the easiest land in the world for Mag, his base damage isn't too bad, but up against Iron Shell Spam of Funic, it's going to be very difficult to make sure he can control this lane. And then fighting underneath his own tower, trying to get last hits, is going to be also very, very difficult. And it looks like Puppy's already changing himself. We're going to try and run a, uh, a dual lane, so actually they leave Kuro up on the top. Uh, now gank in mid lane with the DD rune. This actually should be the death of Dendi. Tell the to wait until he's just far enough away. Drag it back, then the breach fire. Dendi 100%. First, First blood yeah. spilled out by Team Empire. <laughs> it's really nicely played. And it's a Vorse who in fact moves down to the bottom lane. He wants to be part of, he part of this fight. And Funnick, well, maybe they can try and force something here. Funnick's been kind of stuck in between the trees, which isn't the plan. And Mag, wow, you are so low on life. You might already be considering using that salve of his. Funnick was already surged up too. Thinking to run in now. Does Kuro? Oh, there's a tether up, and they throw him back. He needs to level up Sandstorm. Because, downside about this lineup, where attack. is the AoE stun? Question anybody? Can it be answered? And the answer is no, it cannot be. This was uh, actually a very old fashioned thing you could do with the SKs. You did need level two Sandstorm though, so you could stay in your Sandstorm forever Radiant's and it did force the wave out a attack. lot further. But what the, the beauty of it is, you can't get pulled out of it. So if you want to come in and try to do damage now, especially with the radius that's been increased on the Sandstorm, it's very difficult to stop the SK from doing what he's doing. So he just leeches experience, and you're having a hard time farming and burning through consumables at the same time. Well, funny, it's going to spot always going to fly. They're just looking for the two-minute rune at the moment, and he is not going to get lucky. The invis rune is up on Dyer's top, in fact. Top tower is under attack. That's puppy looking. Okay, he's giving clarity over to Funnick. He needs that level two. <laughs> Let him stand close enough to the creep where he can get level two. Just babysitting a Vorst on this bottom. Makoro. And this does really just turn this SK into a core now. Core will be fine with that. He played a lot of cores back in his time too. Back in his time, so his time is over. His time's not over. And Funnick starts leeching the experience from the camp as well as taking the last hits with his iron shell. Oh, nice denial. And Luminant, always gonna fly. Ah, a little bit off target. It's not gonna hit him straight. Okay, okay, you're low on life. Hey, I double click. Underneath the tower. <laughs> and that's why let my double clicks work, damn it. Storm Spirit will go down underneath the tower. The kill second though. Which means DK, then again with that range, uh, you still would have got the experience for it. Either way, the gold is split between the two of them and they both kill each other in the mid. With DK having to dive a little bit too far underneath the tower to get the kill. Kuro does have that third level now. He's trying to decide what he wants to build into. That's a Vorst doing 13 1 on this bottom lane. Luminant spam, Mag's already managed to find Puppy in the corner. At least he does have now his Chakram so he can spam out his mana a little bit more. Gonna need a lot more where that came from. Oh, Koro, flag cannon, sandstorm for evasion. Only surging for right now. Problem is he's pushed the Kree wave out too far, but he has to cancel his sandstorm to get himself in range for the experience. Bottom lane is preparing for more. He's gonna find a boss, gonna dagger in. Funnick with the iron shells. Nice pick up and throw down. Gets the AoE stun out towards Funnick. And that's probably the only actually AoE stun that Empire do have. But with the iron shell damage, a boss. Ah, no! Whoa, 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 whoa. This game went all over again. Having under towers, even with Iron Shell, you're not gonna survive that! You got Mag hitting you from one side, and you got Always on a Fly hitting you from the other! It basically makes a sandwich with the tier 1 tower poking its head up through the meat. It's the unwanted source. And 3 1 now in favor of Team Empire. We should just switch this over to Net Worth already. 
The radiant side will be leading. Here I am. Magically's been shut down a little bit. And they will lose this tier one tower at some point. Finally, still doing creep skipping correctly. And Mag will try and zone him out a little bit. It's so difficult to do as a puck. You, see, you can't harass onto a, onto a fun, onto a dark seer. It doesn't really work properly, especially when you got luminous behind. My. We got that from Poppy too. Two point chakra. No surprise. Mag's gonna try and stay down here. Poppy's gonna wait for the new creep wave so he can nuke it. Doesn't doesn't want to just throw it to hit Mag, even though that would be a nice thing. Their objective right now is to take that bottom tower, and they need to. Like a force threw away his life, and now he's back on the bottom lane. I think it's 1600 net worth in comparison to its opposite, which is the Jara up on the top lane. Silent at 2.6k. Trying to force the tower, but again, Courage is able to soak up the experience in the farm. DK and Rubik going on a hunt, but Dendi is in middle lane, and he's going to need to jump pretty quickly. If they can get the jump on him from inside the fog of war, there's Dragonfall, which means they got the range. Tell him he's follow up. Dendi, he's got one coming in. Okay, that's not going to help him. Storm Spirit goes Dyer's down, and that was meant for his bottle. He just sends it back. So another gank on Dendi, we have 4 1. It was nicely done. They used the fog of war, realizing during night time they had that cover. And now Kuro, this is something that can zone him out the balls of Wisp. Pretty sure that's a bottle coming on the Kuro, as well as a lot of other things. But they're chasing Kuro to the ends of the earth. Power strike away. Only way you can outrun that kind of damage from Team Empire. Thanks from above! Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I'm so low on life. Observer Ward's about to die off as well. Poison of flying again. That's a little bit close, man. It's a little bit too close. Luminous spam. Funnick into the surge. They're still telekinesis. He's got a little bit of iron shell burn off on him. Another round. They feel they can take the kill with the dream call. Yeah, they can. And yeah, they can turn it around with that orc and connect on Funnick. Yeah, he's got the kill. Lunat, away, jump, mag is out. 43 life points, face shift one. He's gonna pop up the south. Now Denny jumps down. He's gonna try and get this kill on the puck. It'll be a decent one too. Solo experience for him. And now a long jump up to where he's gonna fly. Slows him down once. Iron shell damage with that desolate effect kicking in from a boss. They go two for one on this bottom lane. Not the greatest trade though when Resolution's taking the mid tower. So they have to TP the Darkseer into this mid lane. He's the only person who can lane up against Resolution at the moment. Kuro still having himself a great time up on top. The upside here, for Na'Vi at least. This SK is getting more experience and farm than he would have ever gotten in, in previous times. But at the same time, his net worth is still sitting only at 938. Because he's only got 8 last hits. Sandstorm is continuous damage, so Silence has to be on top of his nice. Or Kuro has to be stuck inside of Sandstorm. There is very little that uh, he can do. Like, he can't come out there and just go and contest for last hits because then Jara's gonna nuke him down. So Kuro's almost just like a placeholder on this top lane. Which is probably the reason why Funnick is now up on top lane. So Kuro can start roaming with the three points Burrow Strike or at least stacking Dyer's up his own jungle and farming it. Attack. And actually, they're gonna try and kill. Surge on Kuro. Do they go up or down? Van scores down. Makuro ran up, and well, they're in the wrong positions. Call down's gonna come, Fire Strike's gonna hold on there, but Kuro takes so much damage to this, and Puppy Sans gonna give him a double kill here. If Fenskor could have saved him in time, Kuro got inside the Sandstorm, and then I thought that call down would be enough. They get themselves a double kill on Funnick while on bottom lane of Force. He's fighting up against Mag. Dreamcore triggers on him too. He outran the range of it, which means he took the sun and the camp and the damage. He tried to get himself away. Hey! Nahar's got himself a free item! The rewards are finally Dyer's there for Alan. Watching a game! And he gets himself a free item. That's our stats, man, peoples. It's not a static tonight, but he must be watching from Dota TV. Bottom lane, more trouble for a forced Empire, they're just destroying him. Force him off the lane, saying, oh, maybe I can come back for a desolate over on one person with Dendi. He possibly could affect Dendi. He can finish the forward with a fly. Evades the breeze fire with that secondary jump. And now looks to resolution. He can't get himself a kill on that DK, though. There's too many life points there. You can get the mana from Poppy. Three point Chakram will allow Dendi to go for another jump in a moment. Yeah, you see him dropping all the items so he can uh, yeah, get the Chakram, bottle charge up. Goes back up to full mana instead. Divorced. Where is his farm? Where is his space? When nine minutes in, I actually thought he was worse than this. They need to do something about Silent. They Dyer's really need to do something about Silent. Attack. 
and more than what they did in the last fight. Now Mag's moved up and he spots out Funny. Dream call available in one second time and Funny possibly the best time. Oh now, there it is, Kuro. He's gonna give some double virus strike and he gets it too. Going into the episode but the silence comes down from Mag. Funny, the awful connect on him on one side and Kuro, there's dust now being brought to the fight. Two heroes lost up on the top lane. Very little expended from Team Dyer's Empire and now they will also attack. take the tier one tower on the top lane. Team Dyer's Empire, they have fallen. literally grabbed Na'Vi by the scrotum and are pulling tight. There is no comfort for Na'Vi anywhere on this map. Illumis at least, at least able to keep that bottom lane out, but they got a DK as well as a Rubik knocking on the front door. A Rubik is also about to crack his level 6, which means then there's more abilities from Na'Vi which he will be looking to steal. He's able to steal Burrow Strike, even Illuminate, Chakram, Iron Shells, Storm Spirit Jumps, Vortexes, Spectral Daggers, so much. Denny, he's just oh, trying yeah. to run in now. A3 on him, and there's a relocate coming in as well. There's more support from Empire with the cooldown. Kuro, Burrow Strikes through. This time, remember, there's no weapons that are available, and Denny, Silence up control. The Spectre Horn will go off, but there's little to no damage in the force. He's already in the middle of this fight, and what was stolen by Ultimate Fly? Spectral Dagger returns into a force, and they move up towards Funnick right now. Back back in, but there's no combo. He's gonna go down right now, and this may even be. I, I don't want to call it when there's only two tier one towers down. Dyer's Team Empire, they are they're not losing anything here. And Navi have nothing to work with. They got no BKBs, the the SK doesn't have any kind of major jumping item yet. Illuminus then delay ability. Structures are fortified. It's their primary thing. Oh, Dyer's jump in. The boss. Daggers down towards Silent, but always gonna fly. Picks him up and throws him back quickly. Now Storm. A long jump in. Silent, the DK's done! Resolution in perfectly. Silent with 22 life points up. We get a full rocket barrage off. And Puppy, no, he had to let it go straight away! He held on to it. Max shows himself for a little bit. The Spectral Dagger keeps going, but that slow is not enough. He faced it. Oh, wow! He didn't get that right. Fire Strike from Kuro is too short. But connected, he possibly could have got a kill, but then again, with Wisp on the way in, he couldn't have healed him up straight away because he had no damage taken to him. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Man, Danny diving in so deep in resolution. Like, Radiant's you can see him coming from a mile away, so attack. it wasn't like the, oh my god, legendary timing of the start of oh, reaction speed of a car, oh, still trapped. Ah! Uh, it wasn't one of those moments, even though it kind of felt like that when I said it. Um, but now it's the fact that he just instantly turned it, and Denny, you thought, all he needs is one hit to kill off. One hit to kill off that gyrocopter. And they get what they were searching for, which is the death of the gyrocopter. Not to mention his streak. They couldn't get it. And now Sarn just goes through the same build again. Pulling into the Yasha, while Empire, they're gonna smoke up. Ourselves a Shadow Blade build starting up from Resolution. Actually, he started with the Ogre Club before he picked up anything, and now he went into the Shadow Amulet. Aggressive Observer was they see a boss. Whisper relocate. I think we're going on a trip, boys! Pack your bags! Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Not there. Matt doesn't even have his Blink Dagger yet, so I suppose that's one reason why. But he's about to run into four heroes from Na'Vi. Dream call and four man silence? You're considerate. Dyer's bottom tower. Storm Spirit, long jump in. Mag, Vortex, he'll be dragged and then stunned. That's the death of him. When Navi's ward it starts to kick in. And Denny is finally able to capitalize on the hero. And they're looking to jump again. Always gonna fly. Dragon back. The wall goes down. They'll give it any kind of damage that Navi have to find kill after kill. But now they have to go bottom lane. Tier 2 tower is being forced out. What's that coming in on the courier? Is that going to be any kind of critical item? It's going to be the, re the rest of the Yasha for Silent. With the courier's path to go back, you may even just walk straight at the top of the, uh, of the Navi lineup. There's a DK illusion there. Yep, there goes one courier. Dandy, is he trying to have a crack at that one? He sees it. Spectre Horn's going to go off. Okay, so courier's not going to be our death in this one. We look towards the heroes. Spectral Horn. Okay, you found Io in the corner. Got a long way to go down before they can catch up both Silent as well as Resolution. I don't blame uh, Mavors for not reality down to those guys. They got DK and Lucius trying to fire through it. Now they're gonna turn around. Son of Funny, free fire on two. Where's Oh wow, Mag! Dream call with a double silence. Jaro got the perfect call down to Black Cannon. Dyer's two heroes lost almost instantly. It's the two calls from Navi. Kuro in the, in the tree line. He can't survive there. DK will take the kill. Three heroes down for the price of one.
Wisp is back up on the field. The TP's, oh, it's not the TP's top. Makes the most out of the farm. He is now six for one. Net worth at 8.2k. It really feels like we're staring down the same rabbit hole. And he has to jump for it. Always gonna fly. Who wants to hold him here? Sentry Wall is down too. Resolution's running in, and he's gonna get the stun on Dendi. Free and fire damage, it should be enough, and it is. <laughs> trying to battle for these runes and try to walk himself back past the Rubik. He knew those other heroes on top, which is why he probably felt like he didn't want to head up there. But because he did that, he walked straight to the waiting clutches of Resolution Shadow Blade. I guess hiding on the bottom lane. Puppy and divorced. If he had a Dagon, I'd say if he had a. I got Puppy. But then again, he's got a Wisp relocate, just came up cooldown. Koro. Way! Biggest thing to steal. Burrow strike on Koro. Wow, that search helps him, but the Whisper is perfectly from Venscore. The range was right. Bottom lane mag, he's jumping out. There's a recall coming in from Puppy. They want this kill. They want this kill. The fuck now, a force. Silent stuff. The dream call is going to be used. And then he just jumps in. But now Silent arrives. The force gets obliterated. Venscore with a double kill. And Storm Spirit just has to holding himself away. But then he is so low on mana. And look at resolution. With the dragon form ulti. Here. Oi, oi, oi. He can reach him. From the high ground. The dragon form gets the stun. And holy Hannah, that sneeze. <laughs> I feel like my nostrils were illuminated. <laughs> and this Empire lineup, they double the kills of Na'Vi. 16 minutes in with 33 kills across the board for both these teams. The experience is through the roof. The plays are going perfectly. Silence on his way to getting that BKB bought two of the most expensive parts and Resolution's already hunting for another kill. Now Sentry Wards are down, but Kuro's gonna get spotted out doing what he's doing. Into the Sandstorm. And well, would you believe it? There's no Sentry Wars out. The Dagon's gonna come in. Kuro Burris right going to the episode. And they kill a resolution right now. Oh, he got the tunnel off in time! The channel never finished! And Kuro's trapped there to call down help to get the kill. I think it was the one who got the kill. Moving it here from Pompey, but just minimal to nothing. Phase boots off cooldown in two seconds time. And then Silent will jump for Pompey, or he just goes for the flag cannon. Hitting on everyone, including Kenny. The resolution was able to stun up. Pompey. Hitting the trees. The force is up here too. The fly cannon flies towards him. And now there's a dream call over on Funnick as well. The whispers will hit them absolutely perfectly into the Rock of Barrage. And there goes the Dark Seer, as well as Puppy in the tree line. This field is littered with the corpses of Navi. Aims are more than tough tonight. Especially this one for Navi. I will now take the Radiant's tier 2 tower and mid. Roshan's still an option for him, but right now, map control's better. BKP's gonna fly attack. out to silent. Resolution. Yeah, you know, there's recipe on the courier, no? So he's a, a recipe away from BKP. Blink Dagger already over on Mag with now 1,000 gold. I'm taking the last hit in the tower. Actually, sorry, Rubik's is the last hit in the tower. That's just the extra bold gold he got for the tower going down. Oh. Now, like, how is Navi meant to come back in this? The only option is to get, like, a. I can back into a five-man wall Barret Strike epicenter, Radiant's but every single time, like Resolution attack. Stun, they Radiant may not have many in their lineup, fortified. but they're using them at the perfect times. Bottom lane, there's some timing going on. A boss, he's actually Radiant's caught the tree. Line. I think he's gonna break him free, but it also drops him down, so silent. Ben's core just holds him here. Fallen. And the sandstorm also stolen by Rubik. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Two heroes down for the price of nothing and the tier two tower in the top lane being pushed out by resolution. They're coming down for more. Silence over on Puppy. The main charge will go with the relocates on the way in. Now blinding light's gonna make this run the difficult but rocket barrage. Well that one's gonna hit. Nice copies Dyer's though. Not enough to get the kill attack. on Mag, and Silent will mop up all, all the copies from the wall. And then they relocate Radiant's back down the bottom lane and then they're forced to the tier what, tier three tower? With the Darks here down, the wall down, cooldown two. He needs a full jump here. Like, he just needs to jump and get resolution. Dragon Form is still up, and now he's in Shadow Blade, so there's no way to get the jump. But there's no detection over on the Storm Spirit. Again, we're seeing Dendi going with his double null talisman, Storm Spirit, which means, again, there is no control. The double nulls are meant to buy you the time. So you're still effective in the early points of the game, but you can get yourself into that side of the vice. With Dendi being three for nine, 
It's just it's just too too late. If he had the kill counts of Silent right now, it'd be a very different story. 10-1-11, that's a huge streak over on Silent. If they can get his kill, it's well worth it. But getting a kill on Silent? Uh, it's like asking waves to like break in the Dyer's ocean and not on the shore. Attack. Actually, they also break in the ocean. Hey, I think it's possible. <laughs> they break on other waves. Just say waves to break on the shore and have a shore in the ocean. Then you'll be on an island. Either way, I have now dug myself a hole so deep with this that there's no way to come back from it. So let's just move on. 29 to 11. Still can't believe that Navi is still in this. They're a team that normally Dyer's just say no. Unless is there is attack. really hope to win the game, Dyer's they wouldn't play on. They must think that this combo with Dendi and the later combo is all silent. They're gonna get him. Silence already on Dendi. Catch him out. He's trapped in here. The Rocket Mirage is already going to work it now. The beat game was on with the call down. Finally got his ball down, but there's no follow up. Koro, he can't even go to an epicenter in this scenario. Silence got a double kill with the BKB to protect him. Unfortunately, he's running through. He's looking for a secondary kill here. He's always going to fly. He's already made to pick up one over on the arrow. Forest right. Silent. They need to get through his life points, but now the flag kind of turns on as well as the Rocket Mirage. Koro is a triple kill for Silent. I don't know how he's supposed to repel firepower in that magnitude, and the answer is they can't. It is a G to the GGG. Where Team Empire will go 2 0 over Navi here in the D2CL. And Navi will be probably forced into a showdown matchup against Power Rangers to see who can get themselves into the playoffs. Depending on what happens with Fnaticus, we can then have ourselves a three way tie. And then crap gets complicated. Either